It is a joy to be able to wish you a happy Easter. I hope this uh, finds you being able to take some time off to rejoice, to celebrate, to gather as you are able with uh, friends and family on this uh, beautiful Sunday. I have no announcements since uh, everything's been kind of leading up to this moment. And so uh, here we are. So we'll jump right in. The story of Easter is the story of Jesus. And I know this, and yet this year I have found myself focusing a lot about the disciples. How are the disciples, how are they handling this moment during Easter? Thinking about all the whiplash that they've gone through. If you look at what the disciples have been up to over the last couple of years, they began with the beckoning of Jesus, follow me. And they have. They have followed Jesus. They have followed him year after year after year. And they have gone places they would have never imagined. They have been involved in healing and serving and in helping people. They have learned. And um, they have a sense as they're going into Jerusalem, they have this sense that this is going to be interesting. Like they know that this is going to be a powerful moment as they go into uh, Jerusalem. And they go and they celebrate the Passover. And this is wonderful. They're celebrating the Passover. And they expect something important to happen. And something important does happen. But it's that Jesus is arrested. And he is uh, tried and convicted and executed. And so at the end of the week, on Saturday, I'm sure they were just kind of shell-shocked. Kind of just sitting there, not sure what has just happened. And then on Sunday, Jesus shows up. And again, it's this like sense of whiplash from the highest highs to the darkest moments. And now Jesus is back. And just imagining all the questions they would have asked. Like, what was that like? What happened? What did you say from the cross? Why did you say that? Jesus says seven different things from the cross. And they would, some of them would have been there to hear and be able to ask, like, what did you mean by this, Father? Forgive them, like all these things that Jesus says. Then the sun sets on Sunday. And again, what's next for the disciples? What, happened? what do they do? What, what, what do the disciples of Jesus do the Monday after the resurrection? All, each of the Gospels make a point of telling us about what happens in the days following the resurrection of Jesus. And it's fascinating how each of them tells this moment in a little bit different way, because each of the authors of the Gospels remember things, different things pop out at them, right? Different things, you, four different people are going to tell the story four different ways. But the central uh, last thing that Jesus tells his, the disciples is remarkably consistent. Listen to, these are the la this is the last thing that Jesus tells the disciples in each of the four Gospels. Right? In Luke 24, at the end of the Gospel of Luke, Luke is someone who wants to explain. And so what Jesus does is he explains. He explains, you need to stay in the city, in Jerusalem, and then the Spirit will move upon you, and you will be empowered, and you will be guided, and you will go forth from the city. Like in this sort of list explaining, oh, here's what's going to happen next, and you're going to go forth from the city. Mark, at the other end of the spectrum, is characteristically blunt. Right? There, there is no explaining here going on. It, it, what, what is remembered is Jesus telling the disciples, go into all the world and preach. Go into all the world and preach. That's it. Like, there's not a lot of explanation about what, uh, what, what's happening. But this still, go forth. Matthew 28 has a bit more to say. Matthew is always focused on like the the bigger picture of the church. And so the way that he remembers this is sort of a commissioning. So go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I have commanded you to do. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is what Jesus tells the disciples, the last sending forth in Matthew. Right? And it's a very detailed, like their marching orders. Go forth, baptize in this way, and teach in this way. And it's like lays it out step by step. Here is what you're going to do as you go and, and get going. 
In John, we have the most concise of all of them. And it's in a kind of elegant in its way. In John, we see how Jesus had beckoned the disciples at the beginning of the Gospel of John saying, follow me. Right? And that's how Jesus had sort of pulled them into the story, pulled them into following Jesus, pulled them into uh, God and God's people working together for salvation, become part of the disciples, part of the, this movement of people following Jesus. It all begins when Jesus says, follow me. And those are the last words too. Those are the last words that Jesus uses with the disciples is, follow me, because the journey's not over. That was one stage of the journey, but the journey's not done. It's time for what's next. Reading the end of all four of the Gospels, like I, I couldn't pick just one reading for the, this video today because like it's all four of them. It, it's this sense that each of the Gospels is getting at that uh, the last thing Jesus wants to say to his disciples is go. Follow me and, and get out there and go. It is time to keep on moving. And this is something that Jesus needed to say. Jesus needed to say this because the disciples do what comes naturally after a high stress moment. They just kind of slow down and stop for a minute and kind of catch their breath. The Gospel of Luke tells us that they hang out in the city. The Gospel of John tells us that from there they go and they go fishing, right? <clears throat> It's not surprising. After the whiplash, after the events they've gone through, it's not surprising that they're, they slow down for a little bit, kind of get their bearings again. It's how we are wired as well. After a big event, we slow down, get our bearings. But then Jesus shows up and tells them, you don't get to slow down and stop. It's time to get going again. It's time to go. Follow me. We got places to head out to. Right, what Jesus says to his first disciples is equally a call to them as it is a call to us. That call for us is to go forth, to baptize, to preach, to follow me. Right, to follow Jesus is not about stopping and building what is safe. To follow Jesus is about following and knowing that every step of the way is worthwhile. And so what does this journey look like? Right, the journey of following Jesus is to be a people that are finding new ways to serve, to be finding new and deeper, more meaningful ways of prayer, to be walking through scripture constantly and consistently time and time again, to be learning new ways to be peacemakers in times of disagreement, to connect to people who we have not listened to before, even if we have to go to them, and going to people, right, to meet them, to engage, to understand, and to learn. And for some of us, going to people means getting online and connecting in ways we've never done before. And for other, others of us, it means getting offline and paying more attention to the people in front of us. There are many ways that the journey that we are called to beckons us, what, what we're called to do. And what happens is what we are called to do changes over time. If we look at the disciples, we see that there were stages of their lives. Like we, we know the sort of the first stage. We know the stage where they're following Jesus. And, and then we can read the book of Acts and, and we can see how having followed Jesus, now the next stage is now they, they start teaching other people how to follow Jesus. And we know from the history of the church that from there, some of them stay in place in Jerusalem and, and lead a growing network of churches and some of them travel. I mean, and so each of them think about what you have to learn as you follow the call of Jesus. If you're one stage at a time, if you're the disciples, like you've gone from learning to teaching to overseeing. And, and those would be distinct and different ways of, of, of following the, this call of, of Jesus. And that's true for us as well. That's true for us just in the nature of who we are. Like, over our lifetimes, our strength grows, like physical strength grows, and then it starts to fade. Right? And our wisdom, but as the strength starts to fade, our wisdom grows. And we know not just how, how to swing a hammer, but when to swing a hammer. Right? The, we, how we can serve and what we can do shifts over time, over the stages of our life, as our abilities shift. 
And, and so we go through stages where we, we, are, we can barrel in and we go through stages now where now we've learned a bit more and we can approach challenges differently. We go through uh, t stages of life when tragedy strikes and to follow Jesus is to learn the ways of pr patience and prayer and trust. We go through times and stages when we, we are, have to grapple with uh, change and, and developing curiosity around what is happening in the world around us when it becomes clear that the ways that we have followed in the past need to be looked at and examined. Right. Jesus' last words to his disciples were true for them. And they're true for us. Follow me. Like, we got to get going. Like, just looking at all of them with Luke, remembering that uh, we turn to the Spirit to guide us, with Mark, that just that simple imperative to go and to preach. With Matthew, all the structure that Matthew gives, that we are to teach people what we have been taught and remember that Jesus will, will be with us. And then finally back to John with that simple, elegant imperative. Follow me. I said, follow me. That invitation that began everything for the disciples and it begins everything for us. We have chosen to follow Jesus and to follow Jesus is a journey that will take us in many different ways places in many different ways. Follow me, that is still Jesus' call to us. It is still our response to the challenges we face in the world. It is our response to what's broken in the world, to invite people to follow Jesus with us and do something about it. It is our good news to the hurting, that in following Jesus, knees are made strong and straight and limbs are made limber and true and eyes are made clear as we look up to the one whom we follow, right? As we look towards the kingdom that is to come. To those who are yearning for justice, we say, follow me and we go to the table, right? Where we gather with everyone, everyone else who wants to be at that table and we say, this is the place where all are welcome and all are seen as the children of God and now how do we live this in the rest of our lives, all right? Follow me is the response of the church to the broken world to say, we found Jesus following him and that's what, where we have found our hope, and, and we believe you can find your hope in doing so as well. That is how Jesus beckons us today, beckons us saying, follow me into a life that is transformed, into a journey that takes a lifetime, a lifetime of different stages and different times and different approaches and different experiences. But it's a lifetime that need not stop in death, but be, that is able to follow Jesus through death and into the kingdom that is to come as we follow Jesus towards his kingdom. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us pray. Lord, your call and your invitation rings across the ages to follow me. We have responded, we have followed, and we pray that each step that we take might bring us closer to you. Give us wisdom on this journey to see when the next step is different than the one before and sustain us until we can join you on the other side of death in the kingdom to come, our journey complete and thy will fully realized. Finally, we pray what you tossed to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, I hope that uh, you are able to follow this call. Follow me. I hope you have a church family to follow with. And if you need a church family to follow with, you are always welcome here. May the peace of Christ be with you this day and always.